COVID shutdowns. And what's been amazing is, you know, for all the doom and gloom and everything that you've heard, and certainly it's impacted everyone in some way, shape, fashion, whatever, um, the housing market, especially in Jacksonville and at the beaches, crazy. It, houses are just, you can't keep them on the market. So, you know, it, it, I guess it was a great time to start a business, kind of looking back. <clears throat> Um, so, you know, with a lot of the new cycle and certainly with the uncertainty that we have right now, what type of advice can you give someone that's, you know, maybe a first time home buyer, maybe looking to refinance, you know, th there's, is there going to be a bunch of, you know, rate jumps or stuff like that? Should people be doing nothing? Should, you know, what should yeah, they be doing? No, good, good question. I mean, we've seen starting the big, beginning of this year, we were seeing rates, high threes, low fours. Yeah. And now we're looking at rates in the in the high twos, mid twos, depends on conventional VA, FHA. I mean, the VA rates are incredibly low right now. FHA loans are incredibly low. So where it goes from here is uncertain, but if you're in the market to refinance and anytime you can get a rate under 3% and save money or drop the percentage point, it, it makes sense. We, we've been doing loans where we've closed in January, February, and it already makes sense to refinance with the break even. So allow me to run a break even analysis for you to make sure it makes sense to do it but based on paying closing costs again. But to answer your question, low rates, low inventory, it's a seller's market, but you can also buy more bang for your buck right now right. with lower interest rates. So I see them low the rest of this year. I see 2021 is gonna be a great year in real estate. Um, I think the job market's gonna be great as well. For the election, stay patient, stay calm. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, figure it, we'll figure it out and, and, and kind of go from there. You've done some amazing things like getting out in the kayak after storms, yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically in the eye of, of hurricanes, yeah. uh, just some crazy stuff. And people have talked about it, which is great. So when we talk about just, just some of the looking back on some of the fun things you've done, whether it's you know, well, those things or others. You talk about the kayak thing after Hurricane Matthew had hit, um, I had I, you know, called you and said, Patrick, what do you think about me uh, getting in a kayak and going underneath a pier that was destroyed? Now they're still working on it. How many years later? That was 2016. Um, and he goes, you're really going to do that? And I was like, well, yeah. So I took the kayak down there, jumped in the water and did some video. And I had one CEO of a company call me and says, um, were you just out in a kayak? He goes, sharks live there in the ocean. I'm like, yeah, it's their house. That's where they live. Of course they do. So uh, what's funny is, which I may have not have told you, when I was coming in on the kayak, and I've surfed my whole life, so I uh, caught a wave on the kayak, and I was coming on in, and it tumped me at the end, <laughs> <laughs> and I lost my sunglasses. <laughs> I had my cell phone. It was in a, a Ziploc. I made sure it was sealed. I had it zipped in my pocket. I didn't think about my sunglasses, but they're gone. <laughs> Someone had a new pair of Costa Del Mar, so what uh, the heck? Well. We talked about you know checking the financial stability and really being there more so than you were before on the client side. Um, and we've seen it a few times where you know insurance carriers that people have flocked to because it's low premiums, right? So people out there just shopping for the, the cheapest insurance, yes. and then all of a sudden they wake up one day and that carrier's gone. So you want to talk about, you know, I know there was like at one point 91,000. Last year, a company went down last fall and put 91,000 policies on the street in a day. Now, so what does that exactly mean? Put, you know, so That means when a carrier shuts down, basically, they're done. They lose their rating. They lost their financial rating. And that means they had 91,000 policyholders that were basically had 30 days to get out and go find another carrier. The problem with that is the market's not really built to take on that much business that hits the streets that fast. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot more difficult than just saying that, but the state of the market that we're in right now, in the property market, it's worse than it was a year ago. And with COVID hitting, and it may have pushed back some hard decisions for the Department of Insurance or the people that make these type of decisions, on whether a carrier lose its rating or not to be able to stay in business or viable, um, it was pushed back. But the problems didn't go away. Right. They still exist. Like the assignment of benefit has been a big problem. You know, uh, escalating uh, attorney's fees. That's a big problem. Um, going three years without a storm, or the last three years, or excuse me, 16, 17, 18, 
with Matthew, Irma, and Michael hitting Florida after 11 years of no storm in the state of Florida, you know, a lot of carriers fell asleep at the switch and rates start going down, 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 and all of a sudden storms start hitting and there's not enough reserves for a lot of companies and I think we may see some fallout coming. So right now, what we're dealing with is carriers are raising rates. Not just a carrier, all carriers are raising rates. And um, it's not pretty. You know, the conversation I remember I had with you was, I don't know what I'm working toward. You know, I'm putting money away and I feel like I'm doing a good job, but yeah. when am I gonna retire? Like, what does this all mean? And I think for me, having mm-hmm. that plan of, you know, I've got three kids, I've got a wife, you know, I wanna retire early would be great. But like, how does what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis getting me to that, whatever that is? Yeah, and, and the biggest thing is, is, and I see it every time that I meet with a lot of people in the past couple months is switching the conversation of, it's not about what you're doing as far as your investments go. It's, that's a, that's a part of the planning process. You know, the, the whole ultimate goal of is doing holistic planning to know yeah, you want to retire at X, you know, in, in, when you're 65 and you want to have X number of dollars per month. Well, you know, how do you get there? Well, and it goes back to just working backwards in a plan, right. bringing in, you know, do you have insurance in place? Do you have um, the means to do what your ultimate goal is? And if not, how can you gain value in what you're doing to have more savings? to put away for that retirement goal, even if it is lofty. Right. Um, there's a lot of people I meet with. It, it's not uh, it's not attainable immediately, but they know that they are on a path to either make more money or sell a business that might, in turn, give them the ability to retire with the lofty goal that they want. Right. Um, and it's just, it, it, the sooner you start it, you know, which, you know, we started you know, young 30s with you. And for a lot of clients, I've done that too. And the younger you start, the better off you're going to be. Right. Um, because that that annual monthly goal that you need to meet as far as putting money away, it's a lot easier to do when you start when you're younger. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's great to see, um, it, or it's great to, for me to, to take a business owner who is so focused on their business right. and try to get them to, take a little bit of that time and focus on themselves and realize that, yeah, I've got to put money away. Um, if my spouse works with me, then yeah, we're going to put money away for our spouse and just, you know, make that your starting point for thinking about retirement along with, if your ultimate goal is to sell your business, then yeah, that goes along with it. But you know, I call it pay yourself first scenario. Nobody really wants to sell, and you've got all these people that want to buy and that want to come into this market, and new construction can't keep up with the demand. Uh, they were saying the, the numbers they were saying were that they're actually at a one of the lowest levels for new construction in something like 20 years right now, and so really? they're, they're still trying to catch up. And it's, I mean, there's if they can if they can build them, there's going to be buyers for them. It's just a matter of getting them built. What advice would you give? I guess on on both sides. So let's start with on the seller side. You know, someone that is looking to maybe upgrade, get a bigger house, um, or just move for whatever reason, but they're kind of sitting. What what would your advice be right now? Find where you want to move to first before you list it, because it's not going to be hard if you're if you're at a market price when you sell. It's not going to be hard to find where you want to